I'm super excited to start where we left off last time talking about Fog Clan's members and their backstories. The cats I'm focusing on this time are considered more main characters than the last set, and they're even more fleshed out, so it's gonna be super fun. In the last video, we covered the leader, the deputy, the medicine cat, and the warriors. So, now onto the apprentices. For simplicity's sake, I'll explain that they're listed as apprentices since the main story started with them all being apprentices, and it kind of goes up until they've had their warrior names for about a year. First up is Stonefrost and Pebblestream, which are the kits of Minnow, Splash, and Stormrunner. Stonepaw, who later becomes Stonefrost, is a large clumsy tom who stumbles over finding the right words. Stonepaw is a long hair, silver and black, classic tabby tom with blue eyes. He struggled as an apprentice due to having bad vision in his right eye. He wasn't exactly given a great hand from the start. A little bit into his apprenticeship, he overhears the younger apprentices Scorchpaw, Thornpaw, and Ashenpaw talking about sneaking out and climbing Rapid Rocks. Rapid Rocks was in the middle of a strong river below their camp. He assumed it was absolutely a bluff until he noticed them gone from the apprentice's den one evening. Without thinking about it, he bolted out of camp to stop them. By the time he got there, Scorchpaw was barely hanging on the side of the rock. She was gravely injured and once found, she told everyone it was Stonepaw's idea, not wanting to admit what they had done. For moons and moons, Stonepaw was angrily ridiculed by many members of the clan despite his pleas in being innocent. Their mother, Dustfern, often told him that Kestrel Star should have exiled him for nearly leading their daughter to her death. Despite everything, he kept his head high and focused on training to become a warrior. He was relentlessly picked on all through his apprenticeship by Scorchpaw and Ashenpaw. His original mentor was Mothwatcher, but after an injury, he finished his training with his father, Stormrunner, instead. As a warrior, he constantly walks on eggshells and is very clumsy and awkward, often stumbling over his words. A few moons after becoming a warrior, talk of finding the scent of an elusive rogue on their territory spread through their camp like wildfire. Eager to prove his worth to the clan, Stonefrost sets out one day to find them. He follows the scent to the edge of a small pond where he sees a gorgeous she-cat named Valley. She was very young, skinny, and had a litter of kittens still attached to her belly. As soon as he saw her, he fell madly in love with her breaking the rules and sneaking her prey, herbs, and fresh bedding each night. He hid her under a small overhang by a stream to hide her scent. This went on for roughly two moons before coming clean to Kestrel Star, and against his better judgment, asked if she could possibly join the clan. To even consider it, Kestrel Star agreed to meet her first. When they got there, Valley was gone. This was his first heartbreak, and he did not take it well, leaving the camp for several moons straight just to try and find her. He wasn't successful, and eventually gave up searching. Stonefrost's sister, Pebblepaw, who later becomes Pebble Stream, was a bratty and sassy apprentice with a huge lack of any motivation. Pebblepaw is a light silver and white she-cat with long fur and blue-green eyes. She wasn't super convinced that training to fight other cats and living by a century-old code was all life had in store for her. She never looked- she never took her training seriously. At gatherings, she-cats would often comment on how gorgeous her fur pattern was or how stunning her eyes shined, which absolutely flustered her. This piqued her confidence more than it should have. Others would skim past her hot-headed stubbornness because of it. She was childish as an apprentice and even as a young warrior. Pebblestream quickly grew tired of the routine days. One night, she snuck out just to wander her clan's territory. She stopped at a stream to hunt for fish, not realizing that she accidentally slipped a little bit too far into Ripple Clan's territory. After falling in the stream, making a complete mess of herself and looking like a swamp monster, she popped up out of the stream and locked eyes with a sleek black she-cat. The she-cat was quietly giggling at her from the opposite bank. From then on, she would sneak out every night to go on mini-adventures with her, as the she-cat shared the same ideology about clan life as she did. This continued for many, many moons, leaving her to question her own loyalty to the clan and whether or not she even belonged in a clan in the first place. The joy and excitement of hanging around Nightwatcher was far too alluring to just give up. She eventually began to feel guilty about her actions and came clean to her cross-clan crush. In a haste, Pebblestream was convinced to run away with the Nightwatcher. About six moons later, Pebblestream's arrogance and defiance to the code ended up leaving her full of dread. Life outside the clans wasn't safe, and she sheepishly returned to Fog Clan. Several moons later, she admitted her wrongdoings to the clan and was filled with self-doubt, pity, and guilt. In an attempt to prove her loyalty to the clan after being busted with Nightwatcher, she had a fling litter with Owlpatch. Everyone was beyond excited that she was expecting kits. The kits were never born, however. Not soon after announcing her pregnancy, she became permanently scarred from an attack by a group of feral rats. 
which will be elaborated on here in just a second. Next is the two siblings Scorchpaw and Thornpaw. Scorchpaw, later known as Scorch Mist, is a very demanding brute of a she-cat. She's described as a diluted gray and apricot mackerel tabby she-cat with short fur and amber eyes, aka a Torby. She's the embodiment of pent-up anger and regret and will do anything to have the attention on her. Often she is disregarded as important due to her flaws and her injuries. As a very young apprentice, she was injured by the rapid rock situation. She has a weak hind leg and difficulty running at times. Right before becoming a warrior, she was captured by two legs and spade, removing her ability to have kits. She has a clipped ear to show this. She's extremely insecure and feels worthless, so she takes it out on everyone around her. She blames Stonefrost for all of her problems, going into the lie long enough that she actually believes it was true. And she also resents her brother for leaving her side after her injury, which I'll clarify here in just a second. She has extreme jealousy issues too. So much so that even when her best friend since Kithood, Pebblestream, announced that she was having kits, which she was incapable of having, she led her into a nest of rats to get eaten, scarred up, and infected. She now lives with that guilt. Thornpaw, later known as Thornfur, is a sweet, timid tom. Thornpaw is a long-haired, brown and white tom with yellow eyes. As a young apprentice, he followed in the footsteps of his sister, Scorchpaw, and her friend, Ashenpaw. He joined them for a few moons, learning how to voice his own opinion and bully others in the process. His sister, Scorchpaw, seemed to be good at everything she did, and he really looked up to her, despite often being spoken poorly to. When the freak accident happened at Rapid Rock, Scorchpaw got badly injured. Thornpaw would spend a lot of time in the medicine den with Poolstep, watching him heal her and follow her recovery. He still loved his sister dearly despite their differences and vowed to help Poolstep as his apprentice from then on out. He thought he would make his sister proud by helping heal her, but instead she came to hold a grudge against him. He deeply regrets not defending Stonefrost when everything happened and is slowly becoming great friends with him. Ashenpaw, later named Ashenfall, is not blood related to Scorchmist or Thornfur, but was taken in by their mother after being dropped off from Fog Clan's camp. Ashenpaw is a short haired brown tom with green eyes. He was dropped off at several days old and was initially brought to another clan by the medicine cat to nurse with a mother who still had milk. After that clan refused to give him back, Kestrel Shar went over there herself and took him early out of fear. Dustfern offered to take him into her litter, which was convenient timing. He was deemed a troublemaker as soon as he was able to speak. He was the loudest kit in the forest and almost never seemed to be at peace. He always wanted his mother's attention and pushed the other kits aside for the number one spot. This would later show in his personality as he bragged about being better than everyone else, not excluding the younger cats below him. Once he learned about not being born in the clans, he started feeling that he was above everyone and the warrior code. His mentor, Thistlethroat, fed into his ego by always telling him exactly what he wanted to hear. He ends up running away with Scorchmist to join his brother, Monty, in Pine's Band of Rogues. They follow not too long after Thistlethroat leaves the clan as well. He coaxed Scorchmist into believing that she was better off there and would feel more at home with the rogues than she would anywhere else. Scorchmist trusted him since they were very close most of their apprenticeship. After all, he was the one who convinced her that the Rapid Rocks incident was Stonefrost's wrongdoing and also made Pebblestream out to be a monster in her eyes after betraying Scorchmist for Nightwatcher. He never seemed manipulative in her eyes. After leaving, most of his actions are in a desperate attempt to redeem himself as an individual away from clan life and figure out who he really is. Both of them are gladly welcomed into the new group. Once on his own, he reinvents himself, changing his personality entirely and basically rewriting his own script. And Willowpaw, later known as Willow Moon, is the younger sister of Thistlethroat. Willowpaw is a medium-haired she-cat with cream and brown Siamese markings and blue-green eyes. As an apprentice, she looked up to her sister Thistlethroat as a role model and friend and refuses to see the bad tendencies in her, gladly defending her. She shares a hate with her sister due to both of their fathers not being in the picture. Her and Stonefrost became very good friends during their time as apprentices, often getting in trouble together. She would take the blame for Stonefrost a lot, knowing that he's already viewed poorly by some of the cats in the clan. They often snuck out at night to come up with battle strategies and moves with each other, or just to goof off. When Stonefrost went off with Valley and fell head over heels for her, she was devastated. 
They were so close and she always imagined a life together. Stonefrost had always given her the initiative that they shared feelings for each other. It crushed her so much that when the time came, she ran Valley out of her hiding spot the day that she was meant to meet up with Kestrel Star to see if she could join the clan. She hoped Stonefrost would then lean on her for support. After realizing how much that hurt him, she deeply regretted her actions but could never tell Stonefrost. Meadowleap. Meadowleap is a medium-haired cream-colored she-cat with brown tabby markings and blue-green eyes. Meadowleap, after having her two kits, Willow Moon and Thistlethroat, a year and a half apart from different outsiders as fathers, falls into a series of false pregnancies. Her children all ridicule her. She'd already gotten an earful from Thistlethroat as soon as Willow was brought into the world. Willow listened to her sister and came to resent her mother, disobeying her early on in her apprenticeship and pushing her out. A few moons later, she's seen with a swollen tummy again. Her kids ask her who the father was this time, and for the third time, she cries to them, swearing she has not been with anyone else. They don't believe her, and neither does the clan. First false pregnancy goes by, and she sneaks off, afraid of what would happen. She comes back to camp with a flat stomach and explains to the medicine cat what happened. He says so long as there isn't pain, maybe she was just imagining it. But he kept an eye on her for a bit. Others also accuse her of giving away her kits or killing them to cover up her mistake which is the same thing that happened the first two times she came back with only one kit in her mouth. It happened again and again, and she cried to the medicine cat about it. They go talk to an outsider named Ferdinand, and then send her near the two-leg place to get purposely captured and spayed, so she wouldn't have to deal with it anymore. Dustfern is a medium-haired, diluted brown pseudo-tabby she-cat with orange eyes. Dustfern, much like her mate, cares deeply about her kits. After losing all of her family members in the flood, and then losing her kit to a fox, Dustfern was slowly driven into being an overprotective mother. When it was time for them to become apprentices, she tried up and down to convince Kestrel Star that she should wait for one more moon because her two babies were not ready yet. After a heart to heart from all the queens in the camp and Flint Burr's pleading, she let her guard down and accepted that her were of age to be apprenticed. Not even a moon later, Ashenpaw leads the newly apprenticed kits down to Rapid Rocks, where Scorchpaw slips off the edge and is badly injured and the blame is placed on Stonepaw. From there on out, she despises Stonepaw and often ridicules him. <laughs> 